Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Moshmi Das. And today in my class, I'm going to be do doing a very short topic, which is inner ear fluids. Now, as we all know, there are two main fluids in the inner ear, the endolymph and the perilymph. How are they different from each other is what we are going to learn today. So the perilymph, it resembles extracellular fluid and it is specifically rich in sodium ions. And this perilymph, it is located in the space between the bony and the membranous labyrinth. It communicates with the CSF through the aqueduct of cochlea, which opens into the scala tympani near the round window. In fact, this duct is not a direct communication, but contains connective tissue resembling arachnoid through which perilymph percolates. Now, there are two views regarding the formation of perilymph. It is, one view states that it is a filtrate of the blood serum and it is actually formed by the capillaries of the spiral ligament. Second view states that it is actually a direct continuation of CSF and reaches the labyrinth via the aqueduct of cochlea. This was all about perilymph. Now what is endolymph? Endolymph is located in and then it is filling up the entire membranous labyrinth and it resembles the intracellular fluid therefore it is rich in potassium ions so here lies the difference between the perilymph and the endolymph the perilymph is filling the space in between the bony and the membranous labyrinth uh, whereas endolymph is filling the entire membranous labyrinth the perilymph is resembling the extracellular fluid hence it is rich in sodium ions whereas perilymph endolymph is uh, resembling the intracellular fluid that is rich in potassium ions now coming to how it is formed now the endolymph is secreted by the secretory cells of the stria vascularis of the cochlea and also by the dark cells which are present in the utricle and also near the ampullated ends of the semicircular ducts there are two views regarding the flow of endolymph the first view states that it is longitudinal that is the endolymph from the cochlea reaches the saccule utricle endolymphatic duct and it gets absorbed through the endolymphatic sac which lies in the subdural space whereas the second view states a more radial approach that is the endolymph is secreted by the stria vascularis and it gets absorbed by the stria vascularis itself however this view presumes that endolymphatic sac is a vestigial structure in man and it plays absolutely no part in endolymph absorption so these are two very conflicting views and we do not really know which is the one to follow over here so we should know both ab about both of them now coming to the composition of both the inner ear fluids you'll see that the endolymph as i was telling you it is um, much more richer in potassium ions compared to perilymph whereas the perilymph is much more rich in sodium ions than the endolymph and the perilymph is very similar in composition to csf and even in protein content you can see the perilymph has a higher protein content and also a higher glucose content so this is all about the differences between endolymph and perilymph how they are formed and how they are absorbed thank you for watching guys i'll be seeing you in my next video